Have you ever looked at something and said to yourself, they massacred my boy? That's how it felt watching Terra slowly descend into the grave. And after 10 years, Gameforge, the last standing publisher for Terra in the West, has decided to close the curtains. In today's video, we're going to be looking at what happened and why a game with such huge potential has now truly ended up in the MMORPG grave. For those who don't know, Terra is short for the Exile Realm of Arborea. It is an action combat MMORPG that was released in 2011, created by Bluehole Studios, now known as Crafton, the same guys who made PUBG. During its release, it stood out as one of the best and beautiful MMOs, pioneering the action combat system. And I mean true action combat system. It was 2015 when I picked up Terra. I've played it for years now, accumulating over 3,000 hours in game. I made so many wonderful friends and became a long-term veteran of the game. So it was shocking when in the morning of April 20th of 2022, game publisher Gameforge made a surprising announcement, the final closing of Terra by Blue Hole, its South Korean developer. Most of us knew that Terra was on life support, to be honest. With a measly Steam count of 200 players in-game, no, no MMO can survive with such low numbers, especially when it heavily relies on the Trinity system of a tank, DPS, and healer. So as most of you are probably asking now, what happened? How did this happen? Why has it come to this? As a veteran of the game who saw the player base slowly and gradually diminishing from a strong 25,000 daily players to a measly 200, I will show you the five main reasons why Terra died. Number one, the nature of the game. Terra is a true action combat MMO, meaning you need to constantly move, dodge, and re-aim to attack. Compared to tap targeting MMOs like World of Warcraft, it is much more engaging and makes you focus on the battle. As great as this is, it carries one huge flow. It is ping dependent. To those who don't know, a ping is basically how much time it takes for your local game to contact the game servers and return a reply. Meaning if you are far away from the servers, your game will feel sluggish. Here's an example from Divine. On the left, an archer with high ping, and on the right, with low ping. The one on the right will always deal higher damage. The lower, the better. So as Terra grew, players who were not close to the servers quickly became frustrated and quit the game. That decreased the population drastically, which is one of the reasons Terra switched to a free-to-play model to balance the lack of population. Sadly, that wasn't the only thing discouraging new players to continue with the game. We have reason number two, extremely bad optimization. No one likes lag. No one likes lag, especially when you are in a game where each boss monster can one-shot you. Sadly for Terra being under Unreal Engine 3, it could not handle large players in the same instance, which is ironic considering it's an MMO. Battlegrounds and PvP zones were practically unplayable to a large portion of the player base. Even high-end pieces of the time struggled. You needed at least a GTX 750 Ti to even think about playing at max settings. Yet that was a luxury cut for the time. So many players left the game and quit. Even I recall Rage quitting and taking a 5 month break because of how badly optimized the game was. They eventually made an optimized time 64 bit version of the game but it came far far too late. Players were already gone. The fact that Terra was 70 gigabytes and sometimes 90 gigabytes was not helping at all. With the lackluster storyline, it did not help its case. And worse is that one of the major low points of the game turned so many potential players away, which is reason number three, the alien race. A concerning trend from East Asian MMOs is the inclusion of child races. Whether it is Black Desert Online, Blade and Soul, you name it. If it's an MMO and it comes from Asia, there's a 90% chance it includes a child race in it. The problem becomes the costumes you buy for them. They're sometimes questionable, making the person playing the game question whether they should be on some kind of list. You, you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But what's your take on this? 
does it bother you or you don't mind it? One thing for certain is this is completely normal in Asia. However, the worst doesn't seem to be a fun. But as a veteran, I feel the true reason is rather different. It stems from a hatred that the alien race is always prioritized, which brings us into problem number four, gender locking. In this case, Terra took it a step further into race locking. The alien race was not particularly unknowing or dressed overly adult per se. What infuriated most people is that so many cool classes were locked to the alien. And to play a ninja? Well, I hope you like playing as an alien. Maybe you like to be an overpowered reaper with massive sights on your back. Well, I hope you like playing as an alien. Would you like your warrior to be faster and flashier? Guess what? I hope you like playing as an Elin. It always felt like the Elin was showered with everything good. Nevertheless, the Elin was not the only one getting all the attention. If you wanted to be a brawler, a cool tank with huge power fists, you had to choose a human female. That exclusivity lasted for over a year before the male human, Popori, and yes, you guessed it, the Elin got it. If you wanted to be a Ghana, a class wielding a super huge overpowered gun, be a human female or castanic female or, yep, you guessed it again, an Elin. The four reasons we have talked about did a great job of dividing and reducing the player base down to around 5,000 players from 25,000. It was still an okay number to be honest. But the next reason is where Terra truly began to fall into oblivion. Do you remember the first and second problem? the ping and optimization problem. Well, you see, for years now, there had been a third party tool that fixed all these issues. It was called the Terra Proxy. For years, the devs knew about it and basically ignored, but never publicly endorsed it. But in 2017, all hell broke loose as we come to the final nail in the coffin. Reason number five, the Terra Proxy drama. To those of you who don't know, the Terra Proxy, also known as the Terra Toolbox, was a program that allowed players to play the game as if they had zero latency. It also added many ease of life plugins to the game, classes that had become unplayable were finally being played, and it had super cool modules that made life easier for tanks and healers. All these were fine and good until a certain class descended on Terra. In March 2017, Terra released a new class called the Valkyrie, a super cool class with over-the-top power and was loved by the community. But sadly for the Valkyrie, it brought alongside it a nail, and the hammer that was to hit that nail sealing Terra's fate was a proxy exploit called Meme Slash. This exploit has two sides to how it pretty much nuked Terra. So let's look at the first side. Mimslash was an exploit that took advantage of the Valkyrie's skills to do unimaginable damage. Battles that took a maxed geared party of 20 players an hour to finish was suddenly being done by a lone Valkyrie in seconds, obtaining an insane amount of highly rare exclusive gear and loot. It was an outrageous exploit. And it lets to say the Terra Proxy devs were not happy and did all they could to make sure it is hard to get. Thus even baited wannabe cheaters into downloading fake copies that trapped their characters in a perpetual void zone. This situation was really bad and the economy was destroyed, flooded with ultra rare items that usually took a month of grinding to get, essentially discouraged dungeon runs for those items. The proxy devs were pissed and the blue hole devs were pissed. But unfortunately here's where things truly started heading south and this is the second side of the story the extremely poor reaction of the publisher. To better understand this, you need to know that although the West had two publishers, in truth, only one was dominating, and that was Enmas. For almost six years, Enmas was unquestionably the best. It had truly brought a fun, free-to-play experience on Terra compared to its notoriously pay-to-win European counterpart, Gameforge. Most European players found themselves playing on Terra NA for its better monetization, communication, and faster game updates. That all came to a grinding halt in mid-2017 during the heat of the meme slash drama. Remember how I said that Terra Proxy was a super helpful tool? The thing is, it was not just helpful, it had become crucial to play Terra. 
That's a vast amount. Estimated up to 70% of the player base used it. Now I'm going to ask you a question. What do you think will happen if 70% of your player base is suddenly faced with the first two problems we mentioned before? And that's exactly what Enmas and Bluehole decided to do. Bluehole, under the advice of Enmas, released a patch that scrambled packet data so that the Terra proxy tool can no longer work. All of a sudden, you had a massive percent of the player base unable to play the game after years of relying on the proxy thus completely dropped the game. Not only that, but the exploiters who created memes slash quickly patched their proxy version and were back in the game causing chaos. The proxy dev team approached Enmas to talk about a less destructive way to solve the issue, but what did Enmas do? They banned them. The very team that had been working tirelessly for free over the years to make sure gaming on Terra is enjoyable to everyone were banned. This enraged the entire Terra community and thus began a mass exodus from Enmas. The one decision to ban the proxy devs pretty much sealed the fate of Enmas and in the long run, Terra in the West. A lot of players decided to migrate to Terra EU which was hosted by Gameforge and Gameforge was wise enough to allow the use of the proxy. It got a healthy dose of new players and prospered for a while. Sadly, Gameforge's monetization caught up to the NA players who had been used to a proper free-to-play system. For them, enough was enough. They finally decided to quit the game entirely, moving on to others like Black Desert Online, Blade and Soul, Guild Wars 2 and the like. Over the following three years, Terra was in a constant state of losing players. Gameforge did nothing to remedy the situation, whilst Enmas was struggling deep to regain its footing. Since they had chased away the very players who paid their bills, Enmas had no hope, and thus in August of 2020 shut down and closed its doors. Over the past two years, all new patches have been grindy and geared towards veterans of the game. Terra has made no new attempt to bring new players, with Blue Hole focused on the development of Alien that instantly died on arrival, by the way. Any hope for Terra was lost. With Terra in a zombie state, the player base shrinked down to a three-digit number. Thus, on the 30th of June 2022, Terra shut its doors to the West, finally saying goodbye. I personally feel conflicted. I knew the game was in a sorry state, but I had hoped it would stay around for at least the next five years. But after a while, it seemed that Bluehole decided to stop development on Terra as it was a game that no longer made any money for them. Well, Terra is dead. Now what? Terra will live on through private servers. The current popular choice is called Manmas Terra, a decent server with a game based on Patch 92, released in 2020. It also modifies some things around to make it easy for players to get to max level and enjoy dungeons. It's, a, it's an enjoyable place, I've personally tried it out myself. Nevertheless, what do you guys think? Was there something Blue Hole could have done to revive the game? If Enmas did not shun the proxy players, would have Terra still been alive today? What do you all think? Let's chat below. But for now, peace out and happy gaming.